Thank you. I'm here to talk to you today about async await in ES2017. Uh, so technically, this, this async await syntax is already implemented. Um, it's, in, it's in Chrome 55, and just as of a few weeks ago, it's in Node v7.6, which is, I think, now even, not even the current uh, version. But, but anyway, basically, these async await functions are a way to let us write asynchronous code in a synchronous looking, more readable fashion, right? So, so makes it, it makes it look like our normal synchronous blocking code, but it's not blocking. Um, so before I get into the asynchronous portion of this, I'm gonna just go over a quick uh, synchronous example to kind of let you know kind of where we're going. So like, as you see here, it's a, just a dummy function sync. We, have a, we declare our variables, assign them, and then we do this little loop, uh, and then we log out that return value. Uh, the return value will be there. Like, w there's no asynchronous thing. We, we do have that value. Everything's fine. Flows top to bottom. You can read it really well, right? And, and as we know, it's blocking, too. It, it does block the call stack. There's, no, there's nothing that happens after this before everything in this sync. Um, so going on to, to asynchronous world, right? So we have our asynchronous callbacks. They're great, right? They, they let us do all kinds of things that we wouldn't be able to uh, and keep our user experience before. Uh, we can make our, make our uh, URL, we can call our HTTP requests, we can uh, query our database, all kinds of things. Um, but it's a little harder to follow. So that asynchronous callback that we pass into our, our function isn't invoked first. It's not invoked immediately. So uh, as you can see, we, ha we have this another dummy function here. Uh, we're doing something, we're getting some URL, uh, throwing an error if we get an error, and then calling this callback once we finish and get our result. Um, and then there's this console log statement down at the bottom just to say, okay, this, this is going to be called before we actually have our result. So we couldn't have assigned the value of our, our function and, and console logged that out down here. Uh, it just wouldn't work because we wouldn't have that response yet. Um, so another, another a, a drawback, another drawback beyond that, that it's a little harder to follow in that, that you can't just log there. Um, is we can quickly devolve into uh, the so-called callback hell. And that's, and that's something like this. And this, this uh, fake example is what I'm going to be using for the rest of this uh, kind of asynchronous uh, portion. Um, it's do a lot of things. So we have this, it's basically a middleware. We, have, we get this rec and we want to send back this response. And we're querying our database, get some user. With that user, we're going to get his cart or her cart. And then, with, and then after all of that stuff, we are going to do something with both of those cart, get a result, and send that result back. Um, it's, as you can see, it's kind of this pyramid of doom structure uh, where you've got, you got error catching every other line. Uh, there's no error bubbling, and it's, and it's just a pain. Like When you're in, down here in this like 15th line, trying to keep track of all the variables you have scope for, all that, it gets really difficult. Um, and so promises are here for, to rescue us here. Uh, they save us from that callback hell. There's no pyramid of doom here. Um, and some extra things that promises give us that aren't just saving us from that, that, that uh, pyramid of doom. We get, we get chaining very easily. Uh, we can pass promises down the line. Um, we can error bubble all the way down to the bottom so there's no uh, error, if error, if error, if error. Um, and and it, we can pass promises themselves along really easily with that, that dot then function. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's still a, it's a little difficult to read. Uh, it's not as simple. And then we still have all these callbacks, all these little functions that we're declaring and returning and declaring and returning. And it just, it's, not easier to, it's not easy to follow. I mean, I'm sure all of you had the, the issue where oh, you're trying to figure out exactly where you are in a, in a promise chain, exactly what you have. Um, and so, so, so that's where uh, ES2017 async await comes into the picture. Um, so they basically, what they, what, what they basically are here for are to, uh, to get these asynchronous functions and we can write this promise-based code uh, as if it were synchronous. So it's, it's these asynchronous functions, obviously async functions, that look like they're synchronous. So here's a quick basic syntax example. So you declare it with the async keyword um, and then you just continue on like it's a normal function. Um, and so, so, when the, so this async function, it, it makes that async uh, it makes the whole function asynchronous, um, and when you call that function, it will always return you a promise. Um, that promise is resolved with either the return value of the, 
so you, it, it's resolved with the return value or it is um, rejected with a thrown value, either an error or a value that you uh, throw with. Um, and then, so inside these asynchronous functions, you see these, these new keyword await right there. So uh, what await does is it, it basically it pauses this whole, the execution of this single function and it waits for some promise to be resolved. So you, you, uh, the expression that follows the await keyword is going to be a promise. Um, if it's not, it, you actually can do a non-promise, but then and then await will just promise dot resolve that that um, that that value. Um, so every time uh, you get, so the, the await stops our execution, and it will um, basically wait for that value to come back. So you you can you can do things like this that we weren't able to do before. You can say let thing a equals await something asynchronous, and then pass in whatever, and that thing A, the next line, will, you'll have access to that value with the resolved value of, that you got from that, um, that async function, which is really nice. We never had that before. Usually you would have to wait and you, and you have to declare all your stuff in the upper scope and then you wouldn't be able to use them until we actually got that. But this way, you can look at, it's, it's just very quick and then, and then you return and then that, that, that gives you a promise and then which will resolve with our end value. Um, and so, so going back to that function that I did before, so this is, this is how we did it with the promise, right? Dot th user dot get dot then, cart dot get dot then, do a thing, and then we return this do a thing with the user and the cart. And then we send that result and catch. So look at, so look at this, this is about 20 lines or so, right? Okay, here's the exact same thing with async await. It's just so much easier. You, you declare your function and you can, in, the, what you always want to do is a try catch block, which is exactly like we can do with all our synchronous code. It's no, it's no, there's no dot catch, which can be kind of confusing, but there's just this try catch block, um, super simple. Let user, and then you await, just like before, and then you await, and then you send another await with that, the end of that final uh, promise. Um, and at any point that uh, if, if, a reject, or if, if one of those promises is rejected, then you get, you get, it gets bubbled down to that catch, and then you can do whatever you want with that error. <clears throat> so really nice. Um, it's, it's super simple. It makes it really easy to, uh, to, to read these, these things that need to happen in succession. Um, so that's not always the best. Sometimes you have um, things like, uh, so, so some, one of the big, big uh, help benefits of, of using uh, asynchronous code is you can do a bunch of different stuff at the same time. Uh, this async function, it's not doing a bunch of stuff at the same time. You, it's stopping the entire uh, execution of this, of this function, waiting, doing the same thing, waiting, waiting, waiting. So um, even though other stuff might be happening, this is not very good if you want to have like a bunch of different like database calls happen at the same time. And so what you can do is you can do an await promise.all, which is exactly what you think it would do. Um, because promise.all returns a promise that's resolved with the values that you get, um, that's, that's exactly, you can just await that, and then, and then you'll be able to have that resolved array and do something with that array and then return it. And um, like I said before, this return new array down here, that'll return a promise that's either resolved or rejected with a thrown um, error. Um, so, so a couple of quick uh, kind of syntax items to note about this. Um, so await will always return a promise. Uh, or, or sorry, await will always return the resolved value of promise. So something like this model.findbyid1, a SQLized code right there, it will return you a promise. If you await that, it'll always return the resolved value of that promise or reject with the uh, rejected value. Um, and so, so, so like I said before, that await, if, if you just awaited one, it would, result, it would give you a, a promise that resolves with one. Um, and then you always, you need to use await within async functions. Um, like there, it's just, you, you can't, this, this would throw an error. You can't do an await inside of a non-async function. Um, and then, um, the, so the async, async functions, like I said, always return promises. Um, just these quick, um, useless examples, but they kind of give you the point that, that this function up here, it will resolve with this return value. This function down here will reject with that thrown value. 
Um, so that's, that's basically it. That's, that's the main ways to use. And, and with that, I hope, I think you guys can probably replace a lot of those, those promise dot then dot then dot then with just a quick a, async await block. Um, so, so yeah, that's, that's, that's my presentation. They're great. Uh, async functions, you should use them in your code.